Uh, g'day everyone, uh, my name's Cam Blake and welcome to a little information video on just the gear that we're going to pack for our overland track trip that you uh, are all booked on. <clears throat> so um, welcome to Lake St Clair. It's uh, a beautiful day, it's just finished actually snowing about three minutes ago. We've got blue skies above us at the moment, uh, it's very nice but a bit cold. Currently about, uh, about two degrees. Got the currawongs in the background, you'll get used to that sound as we're walking over the six days on the overland tracks, but uh, it's well overdue. I've been doing these trips for <clears throat> many years now and um, really need to uh, put an information pack together so people get a bit more of an idea of what to expect. Um, so what I thought I'd go through is just all the gear that we're gonna use. Um, a lot of the gear I'll supply for you. Um, some people bring their own gear and uh, we'll, we'll get through all the gear that we've got to use and, and how to pack it and what to expect. As we go through the gear, it's actually just starting to snow again. Blue sky there, but snow, so that's a lot of what Tassie Ice has to offer. Um, sometimes it's uh, blue skies and rain, you just don't know with Tassie, but it is beautiful. You can see there's a few snow showers going on behind me here as well. So where we are is actually Lake St. Clair, the jetty. So this jetty is the very last bit of, uh, technically last bit of the walk to finish, even though we come back on a ferry. Um, this is where the jetty pulls up and this is where we finish. So we go from here, back up to the visitor centre, uh, sign the logbook out, and uh, back to civilization. So as you know, the overland track is uh, what we do as a six day walk. Uh, the traditional walk is a 65k walk, which covers from all the way from Dove Lake all the way to Lake St. Clair down here. Um, my tours, we stop at Narcissus Hut, which takes about 10, 12k's, maybe a bit more actually off, off the uh, end of the walk. So the last bit is on this little boat jetty here that you can uh, just see out of frame there. And we come back across the jetty, uh, sorry, across the lake. Uh, on the end of the track but what I want to go through is go through the gear so we'll break down the gear um, I like to break it down make it as easy as possible so walking gear camp gear um, two ways to figure it out is uh, knowing what to wear when you're walking and what to expect when you're walking and then when we get to camp it's a co totally different thing uh, so what we'll do we'll go through all the walking gear at the moment uh, and what we're going to pack and then we'll get into the camp gear so campsite so probably the most essential thing of the whole trip uh, you can't do it really without it is a backpack so this is about a 65 litre backpack uh, this is an f-stop bag this is more of a camera incorporated bag where you can put your camera gear in the bottom and, and load stuff on the top. Uh, I have a variety of bags which you'll be using um, and we'll get them all suited and sized up to you correctly uh, before we get on the track but they'll range from about 60 litres up to 85 litres. Um, probably the second most important thing to, to take on the overland track, again it's, uh, it's one of the essential items that you need to take and that's a tent. So this is, uh, this is my little tent, this is actually a two-man tent, it weighs about a kilo and a half, maybe kilo and three quarters. Uh, this is an MSR tent. Uh, it's called the, the Hubba Hubba. Really lightweight, really strong in wind, uh, quite warm during the colder nights. Um, so again, we'll get supplied with uh, tents, unless you're bringing your own tent. Uh, this is what a tent will look like. So there's a few people actually heading out on the track now, uh, walking the south to north end of the track. Uh, still a bit of snow around, which is, uh, which is cool for them. So as I was saying, um, obviously we've got our tent uh, which is obviously super essential for when we're out on the track. Uh, the next most essential item is your sleeping bag. Uh, sleeping bags come in a variety of sizes, uh, uh, warmth, and uh, also filling. So you can either have synthetic down or goose down or duck down. Um, again, if I can, uh, if people need it, I can supply the uh, sleeping bag for you. Um, I'd probably recommend though, if you, if you are doing a bit of walking and a bit of hiking, to go have a look at maybe getting one that's uh, more personalised for you. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some people don't like the uh, cocoon type style or uh, the tailing out one at the bottom. <clears throat> Others want something a bit warmer than what I've got. Um, so I've got ones that are rated down to zero or minus two, which um, with clothing and sleeping, if you're a warm sleeper, even if you're a mild sleeper, um, that should be more than enough. So, uh, so sleeping bags, super important. All right, uh, next item is uh, what we sleep on. So you can't sleep on the ground. Uh, when we're out on the track, the tents are actually on wooden platforms. So the platforms keep off the vegetation. So this is, uh, these are what's called a thermarest. So these are self-inflating uh, mattress. They come in different sizes as well. They can be full length or three quarter length. Um, I'm okay on the three quarter length because I've got short stubby legs. But if you're a tall unit, then you might want the full length one. Again, I'll supply them for you if you need them. Um, if not, just let me know what size you're bringing so I can make sure it's okay. Um, they also help with the warmth as well. So they'll take, they're about, <clears throat> about an inch and a half thick. 
so they'll take a little bit of the, the coldness out of the ground uh, with your sleeping bag and your clothes that you're sleeping in uh, with the sleeping mat and the tent over your roof over your head sorry you should be uh, definitely nice and warm all right so yeah. welcome back um, change of location we uh, got a little bit crowded on that jetty would you believe middle of winter and it became the number one hot spot in the national park so just move down the road a bit further um, what you see behind you is just a button grass plain uh, which we'll see a lot of on the overland track walk um, but where we left off just talking about your camping gear and, and how it was all set up um, so the way each day goes each night we get to the campsite uh, usually well before dark give us plenty of time to set up uh, as of the first night um, Flick and myself will help set up any tents that people need help with um, but then you're on your own for the next few nights after that so once we teach you once uh, it's all up to you to uh, get it sorted for us tonight, but we will help if need be. Uh, so pretty much each night it um, goes as pretty much arriving and uh, setting up a tent, uh, getting into warm clothes, getting our sleeping bag and sleeping mat that we showed you before all set up, and then uh, getting some dinner and uh, retiring for the night. If there's a beautiful sunset or something happening with the light, then we'll definitely be shooting that with our cameras. Um, and that'll be just a rinse and repeat every day. So up in the morning, beautiful light in the morning, uh, walk our way to the next campsite, set up our tents, get our um, sleep bags, get all our stuff ready and um, get sorted for the night. So when walking every day, uh, it's essential that we have the right gear to walk in. Uh, you will see a lot of people up and about Cradle Mountain area that are walking in you know, really inappropriate clothing for the weather that uh, you can strike on the walk. So walking from top to bottom, uh, head, obviously a sun hat or a, a peaked cap like this, we find if it's colder, then a beanie is a really good idea to keep, uh, keep the heat in a bit more. Uh, working down, you can get one of these neck warmers. They work really well to try and keep your neck warm and you can pull them up over your face uh, if it does get really, really cold. Um, a beanie, as I said, and a neck warmer together uh, really do keep the heat in, in, in on your face and, and your head. Um, working down, so the way I would normally work is have <clears throat> a set of clothes for my hiking. So something like a short sleeve t-shirt made out of merino or polyester or something, a combination of cotton and polyester or merino. Um, generally cotton on its own is not good, it gets wet, damp and doesn't dry very well. Uh, so a base layer of a short sleeve shirt, followed by maybe a long sleeve shirt, something similar to this, thinner or thicker, it's up to you. And then something over the top like a vest, uh, just to keep that wind off. It, the, usually walking in this kind of outfit up the top here is warm enough. Uh, you're warming, you're walking and warming up as, as you go along each day. If it does start to rain or the wind does spring up, then that's where we'll put our spray jackets on or, or waterproof jackets. Uh, work, working for the bottom half, uh, again, some people like to wear shorts when they walk, some people like to wear long pants. You can actually get the convertibles so that's a one sort of a zip off down the bottom and bottom part comes off. Uh, either, or, either of them are fine. If I would suggest if you're going to wear shorts, uh, then it might be worth getting some uh, thermal leggings to wear underneath. You've probably seen a lot of those classic photos where the people wearing shorts with those ridiculously colourful uh, thermals underneath. That's not uncommon to see on the track. Uh, you can be one of those people too if you like. Uh, I wear these type of lightweight pants. These are sort of like a North Face uh, lightweight, quick dry material. Um, I like long pants because they do keep your feet a bit drier and your legs a bit more protected from uh, bushes and scrapes and, and branches. Another essential part of your walking, of course, is your boots. Your feet are probably the most important thing when walking every day to keep dry, comfortable, and uh, try not to sprain or twist ankles and things like that. Uh, so we recommend a walking boot. Uh, you can get sort of uh, ankle cut ones which are quite good, similar sort of thing with a nice rubber sole. Uh, what we find though is you do get a lot more moisture and wetness going down the side because it doesn't have the ankle protection. Uh, if you're looking to buy shoes, try and get one with a really good rubber sole. Uh, one of the lead leading brands of rubber sole is called Vibran. Uh, it has a little lo yellow logo on the bottom of the shoes. Uh, they're really good. They twist well. They've got plenty of grip and they bend well as well. Uh, these are a Merrill shoe. Merrill do a really good range of shoes, uh, but there's lots of other different types of shoes. There's Solomon's. Uh, oh, there's lots of them. You can check out your Anaconda stores, your... Um, your Paddy Palins and, and places like that. They'll all have um, amazing array of boots. Um, try and get one that's waterproof as well. If you can get one that's waterproof or water resistant, uh, Gore-Tex, even better. Gore-Tex breathes better, doesn't let the water in and keeps your feet nice and regulated for temperature. But definitely boots are the way to go. Equally as important as your boots are things called gaiters. You've probably seen people wearing these where they slip on under your shoe and they Velcro up around your pants. Uh, what they do essentially is just keep mud and bits and pieces of crap out of your, out of your, out of your shoes and uh, they also keep your feet dry, they also keep your legs protected and they also keep a lot of leeches out. So as I mentioned before there is a walking kit which would be similar to this type of thing. 
um, where I'll be walking in lightweight pants and having a few layers on top and then rain jacket if need be. Um, the other kit that we talk about, and I'll go through that later in the video, video a bit more precisely, but it is your camp kit. So pretty much a camp kit is a, a, a section of clothes uh, that you really want to keep as dry as possible for the whole trip. Uh, usually that involves maybe some tracksuit pants, a couple of t-shirts, a layers, a jumper, um, and some socks. And that generally, your camp gear generally becomes your sleeping gear. Uh, and you would store that away in a dry, dry bag, which we can supply to you as well. So your walking kit is generally lightweight, layered up, uh, trying to keep yourself light but warm and quick drying. Your camp gear is a little bit different. You want to try and keep yourself warm, uh, maybe a bit of thicker clothing, and you want to keep that, that stuff ultra dry in your pack, which is where the dry pack comes in. So as you can see, I've already put all the stuff back in the pack. Uh, we'll go through that on the night before at Cradle Mountain with you in the, in the cabins that we stay before we depart. Uh, we'll make sure all your gear fits. We'll make sure you've got all the right gear. We'll make sure you've got all the right food that we supply. Um, we'll also be able to take things out of your pack. So sometimes people overpack for the overland track and bring things that really aren't essential. So if you think you're only going to use it maybe at most once, it's probably not worth bringing. So it's about keeping a lightweight um, and as practical as possible. So number one on our list when we're walking the overland track is safety and by far safety is our number one concern for all you guys when you come along. Um, we've done the track multiple times and, and know the track very very well but it's never the same. Uh, conditions change, uh, track conditions change at the drop of a hat so we can be walking in sunshine one minute and blizzard in within half hour. Um, so safety is number one concern. Uh, both the guys, myself and the other guy, will always carry one of these on us which is a uh, what they call a Garmin inReach. Uh, it's a, uh, sorry, a satellite GPS uh, responder and communicator. So we can talk to the outside world at any time. Uh, we can also talk directly to rescue services or emergency services if need be. So both myself and the other guide will have one of these on us all times. Uh, we will teach you how to set off the SOS if, uh, you know, stupid case scenario where both guides become unable to uh, attend. Uh, we will show you how to set this off and, and get the uh, attention of the uh, emergency services. Second part of safety is obviously, well, first part of safety is second part of this bit is also first aid. So first aid kits, uh, both again, myself and the guides will have a first aid kit on us, a bit bigger than this one. Uh, we do have a few of these little ones that we can hand out to people, but if you feel like you need to bring any uh, little first aid bits like uh, bandages or things like that, we'll have you covered for most of the way. The only thing we probably suggest is if you uh, wearing in new boots, we'd hope that the boots are always worn in before you get there, but if you find that you've maybe had a few residual blisters, um, bring some of those blister packs uh, and, and band-aids. We'll have, we'll have some of those anyway, but if you want your own little personal stash, that's fine. Uh, these little first aid things, you can buy them in outdoor shops for about $20 each. Uh, they also make a good little kitty for your personal medication and drugs that you may need. Uh, so if you need uh, personal medication, you can take it on there. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that with you the night before just to know exactly what people have, have got taking with them. Um, but yeah, we'll have those on us as well. In regards to alcohol, um, some people like to bring a little hip flask of whiskey to have a bit of a nip every night to warm them up. Uh, some people like to bring also a, a goon bag of wine or a wine bag. That's, uh, that's your choice. Uh, just remember, whatever it weighs, you've got to carry it. So if you're taking a litre of wine, that's a litre of weight or a kilo of weight that you have to carry with you. So consider that when you're walking. Uh, as you're walking up some of these big mountain ranges, is that one litre of wine really worth it? So before the snow comes in, I think, I think we've got some snow coming over the back here again. Uh, I'll wrap it up there out in the field. Uh, the rest of the video I'll go through a bit more close on about exactly what clothes and exactly what camera gear to bring. And I'll also lay out everything in the pack again just so you've got a bit of an idea of what, uh, what we'll be packing. Um, if you've got any questions of course before the walk, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us. There's no such thing as a stupid question either now or out on the track. Uh, we want to know exactly what you're thinking and what you need to make that uh, trip most enjoyable for you. All right, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you out in the track. It's cold. Okay, welcome back uh, to my land room slash kitchen. Uh, I thought this might be a bit more of an appropriate place to do some more of the camp gear and clothing that we take on the overland track. So I thought I'd just go through uh, what a general camp kit would be. We spoke about the uh, online on track kit and what we wear. Now we're talking about what we wear at camp. So um, the first thing first is we mostly put all our dry stuff in these dry bags. So these are like a compression seal bag. Uh, they come in different literage. We've got tons of these that you can use. Uh, the idea of these is that you put your clothing in there, roll them up, clip them tight, keep
keep them away from the elements, uh, keep them dry, keep them clean. Because uh, these camp kit and camp clothes, they're pretty much your lifeline to keep him warm every night. If these all get um, cold or wet, then uh, you're in for a bit of a miserable couple of days. But um, so pretty much we'll do the same thing, work down from top down. So again, um, around camp, having something like a beanie, uh, a nice warm woolen beanie, merino wool or, or similar is really good. Um, something like that would keep your head nice and warm around camp. Uh, again, I think I mentioned earlier in the video just about the net warmers, so they can go around your neck. They can also double up as a bit of a beanie as well. Uh, they're, they're pretty practical for what they are. They're also nice and warm. Uh, gloves, gloves are essential. So even when you're walking, uh, you can get some really thin, lightweight woolen material or synthetic material gloves. Uh, it wouldn't be a silly idea to have a pair for when you're walking and then also a pair for when you're at, at night at campsite. So a good pair of uh, good gloves. Um, so that, that's pretty much your head down to your hands. Uh, what I would normally use when we're around camp is something like a, uh, a merino long sleeve uh, sort of top. So long sleeve, fairly thick and warm. Uh, it's going to keep you nice and warm around camp, keep the, keep the cool out. So something like that. Okay, so after your long sleeve woolen top, the other good one is to have these little down jackets. Um, they work really well. So made from a polyester or synthetic down uh, or a goose down or duck down. They make different lots. You can get these pretty cheap from Anacondas and Paddy Palins and other outdoor shops. They double up really nicely as a, as a pillow as well. So pack one of those. Uh, for the bottom half around camp, I like tra tracksuit pants. Uh, it does get pretty cool overnight on the track. Uh, if you're coming in the summer months, different story. You might be able to get away with shorts uh, around camp, but even with shorts, I'd still be considering some uh, long thermals underneath just because there can be mosquitoes and bugs around. But uh, long pants, uh, nice and warm. I'd, I'd wear this to bed. All, all the stuff I have now on camp, uh, I'd most likely wear to bed as well. So um, the other the most important thing as well is socks. So these are like explorer type socks. They're fantastic, or you can get like a, a woolen merino type sock as well. Um, for camp, I would try and have at least one dry pet set of socks all through the trip. So if I can get to the Lake St. Clair at the end, I've still got a rolled up pair of dry socks. I'm a happy man. So pretty much, yeah, for camp clothes, we've got tracksuit pants for bottoms. Uh, we've got a vest, woolly, nice uh, woolly vest on top or puffy vest on top. A long sleeve merino and fairly thick uh, shirt underneath. You can obviously put another layer, another t-shirt. Uh, if you want to have another secondary layer underneath, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, some gloves, neck warmer, and a beanie uh, would do us pretty well to keep us warm around camp. Worst case scenario in most situations, if it does get too cold, most people retire to their tents, get in their sleeping bag, and cozy up for the night. All right, something else that we probably need to mention as well is on the track is, uh, we've mentioned a few times, just thermal. So thermal leggings or thermal tops or both uh, are really a good idea for, especially at camp night, uh, camp time at night time. Um, it does get cool. Um, a lot of people like to wear them as they're walking as well if we do get a really cold day. But you can get uh, polyester or synthetic thermals or you can also get nat natural thermals like wool. Um, either or work really well. Um, the woolen ones tend, tend to be a bit more expensive to buy and, and the, uh, the polyester ones and all the synthetic ones are a bit cheaper. Uh, they do smell a bit more after a whole week of wearing them as compared to the woolen ones. But uh, yeah, if you do feel the cold, then a, a set of thermals is not a bad thing. They, once again, they take up minimal room in these stuff packs. So even if you wanted to have a set again for walking and a set for camp, uh, you'd be able to get away with that quite easily with room wise. But definitely look at investing in some thermals if you do think you're gonna feel the cold. So if you do think you're going to feel the cold, uh, it does get chilly. And if you're going in the cooler months, definitely bring them. Uh, if you're going in the summer months, uh, the thermals come in, in handy. Really, if you're going to be walking in shorts or hanging around camp in shorts, just to keep the mozzies off you mostly. Uh, but if you think you're going to need them, definitely invest in them. And uh, even if you don't wear them as much, they take up minimal room, but they'll keep you warm and dry. So now that we've got all our camp gear and, and uh, hiking gear all sorted, what we're walking in and what we're wearing at camp, uh, you're probably thinking, how the hell do we get all this uh, into our backpack over here? So we've got all our camp gear, our stove, uh, we've got all our camping clothes and a few other bits and pieces. We still need to put food and obviously our camera gear. It's not as hard as you think it is. Um, these compressions, compression sacks work really quite well. They, they'll pack down quite well. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll quickly just chuck all my camp gear in, which is going in there, and just give you an idea of how much we can fit in.
All right, so now this is all our camp clothing and any spare sort of dry clothing you have all squashed down into a bag, probably half the size of a basketball. So uh, I've left the big coat out, I've left some um, socks out, and like I said, all this sort of stuff also goes into our backpack later on. But this is uh, how the compression sacks work. You can probably put two or three of these in your big backpack. For walking clothes, we generally put our food in another one, and then any, any bits and pieces in uh, a third one, and it will all fit in that bag. Uh, the one thing I didn't put in this bag is obviously your personal underwear and things like that. Um, most people ask how many undies and how many pair of jocks and socks and bras and things do you need to bring. Uh, I think uh, it depends on you. Um, undies and jocks don't take up much room in there so really if you want to be clean every day and have a nice fresh pair on uh, that's not a problem. You can stick them in there, no worries. So what we'll do now, uh, to give you an idea, this will probably fail epically, but we'll probably try and put all this back in the bag here, just to give you an idea of how it all works. All right, so now we've got the bag packed. You can see it's got everything in there. Uh, I've left out some clothes for, for the day. Still got a bit of room on top. Uh, we haven't put our food in there, but there's generally a big sack in the front we can put our food and lots of different pockets around all the outside. Uh, walking sticks as well, I didn't mention as well. Uh, if you need walking sticks, we do have walking sticks. Please just let us know. Uh, these are good. Uh, I've only started using walking sticks since I've got a little bit older, um, but now I sort of wish I'd been wearing, or wearing them, been walking with them um, since I was a bit younger. They do take what they recommend around about 20% off the load as you're walking along. So they can make your trip a little bit more enjoyable. Uh, they help with balance, especially if you're not used to having a heavy pack. Uh, it does help a bit. All right, so now we're all packed, ready to go. Our food's in there. Uh, everything's ready to go. The only thing we haven't talked about now is just your camera gear. Uh, so we'll go through that now. Um, but this is what your pack will look like. This will weigh around about sort of 15 kilos, 15 to 20 kilos, depending on how much food, camera gear and water you want to carry along the way. But um, after a few meters of walking, uh, you'll get used to it. And uh, this backpack will become your new best friend. Okay, so probably not the most important part of the trip, but pretty damn close to it is your camera gear. Um, so what we thought we'd do is just go through what camera gear to bring and uh, how we're gonna pack it onto this big pack. Um, so first things first, uh, you're gonna need a camera and you're gonna need at least one lens. Uh, a lot of people ask me, Cam, what, what's the best lens to bring? Um, the Overland Track and Tassie in general has uh, some amazing um, sights and, and things to see as, you, as you're walking along. So whether or not you have a wide angle lens or more of a telephoto lens, uh, you, you're gonna get great photos wherever you go. So I always try and just limit it to two lenses. So something like a wide angle lens for your landscape and, and big vistas, and something like a small telephoto, maybe up to 200 millimeter uh, for any wildlife or any close ups you wanna do of mountains uh, or any other sites that we see along the way. Um, so generally I would have one camera and lens and I would store the second lens in my bag there. Uh, how you store it, uh, it's up to you. So whether or not you wrap it up in, in your piece of clothing or whether or not you get a little compartment for your, for your bag, uh, we, can, we can help you with that beforehand if you had any questions. Uh, I like to use one of these snoot cases. So a triangular case for the camera. Uh, the camera just sits in there quite nicely. And then what we do is we zip that up just quickly there. And then you can actually get these little, um, little hooks little clips that actually clip onto the front where, you, where your shoulder straps come along. So you have your backpack on and you have your camera gear right there in front of you with your prime lens ready to go. And if need be, we'll be stopping plenty of times. So if you need to swap lenses or you wanted to swap lenses, you just give us a holler. We'll stop the, stop the group, get your lens out, take the photos you want. But that set up is probably the best I've done in my dozen or so times of walking the track where you have it on front. Uh, it's just very easy to access. So camera's in the snoop bag. Uh, other things you might need, cleaning cloth in the snoop bag, um, spare battery, at least, uh, we want to bring at least two batteries for your camera. Uh, the more the merrier, as long as you don't have a whole bag worth kilos of them, um, but at least two batteries uh, for the walk. That can either go in your, sp in your spare front pocket there or in your bag hidden away. And the other good item to bring is a tripod. 
Um, tripods can be quite weighty, so have a look around, uh, check out the tripod you've got. If your tripod's over a couple of kilos, uh, it might be worth looking to invest in a cheap, sort of lightweight one for this trip. Uh, they will last and they're pretty durable for the five, six days that we're out there. But a lightweight tripod, uh, especially for the late afternoon and early morning, we also look at doing ast astrophotography at night if the nights are clear. So you will need a tripod uh, if you are bringing your big SLR camera. Uh, tabletop tripods work pretty well as well if you want to limit uh, your weight as well. All right, so once you've got your camera gear sorted out, um, other things to consider as well is uh, filters. So there's things called circular polarizing filters and neutral density filters. Uh, they just to help with uh, helping improve your photos with uh, color corrections and uh, long exposures, uh, taking reflections out of things like lakes and, and skies and things like that. So uh, there is filters available. Again, we won't get into that in this video, but if you've got any questions about filters or what filter system to bring, uh, please shout out and let us know. Uh, but this is pretty much the camera gear that I would take. Um, a couple of lenses, your tripod, extra couple of batteries. Don't forget your memory cards. Uh, depends how much you shoot, memory cards weigh nothing. So you can bring a thousand of them and they'll be fine. Cleaning cloth, just to keep any dust and, and moisture off the lens as we're going along. And pretty much, yeah, that's, that's it. Your tripod would strap off to the side of your bag there. Uh, your extra lens would go in top there. Your snoop bag sits on the front and Bob's your uncle. You're ready to hit the track. All right, so that concludes pretty much the, uh, the video uh, in regards to what you need to bring along and how to set up for your Overland Track tour with us. Um, there's probably little bits and pieces that we've sort of maybe scooted over that you might have further questions about. Please don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we haven't touched on the food, but we'll, we'll be in touch closer to the date about food and what you require and don't require. Um, but in a nutshell, this is pretty much how we pack. Uh, this is the camera gear we take. Uh, and all we do now is just wait to get on the track. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and we really look forward to meeting you on the track and, and sharing this amazing walk with you. Thanks.